YouTube makes, in my opinion, an incredibly strong move to favor content creators. Uh, and the story comes from TechCrunch today. But what happened uh, over the weekend, I wanted to get into the literature. I wanted to read what actually they had put out and the claims and how they're being executed. But it looks like YouTube has made a step in the right direction to start to favor content creators. And that's a huge deal. If you're someone who makes content, uh, and we'll get into the story, not to bury the lead, but um, if you're someone who makes content on YouTube, I do believe this is setting some precedent and this is laying the groundwork for what's I think long overdue. And uh, it's, it's honestly, it's a hard thing, I bet for YouTube to actually go ahead and do, because you think of how they make their, their profit and their revenue. But um, to, to protect the, the smaller, especially the smaller content creators who can't put up the fight for these copyright claims, this is a huge deal. And I, I do appreciate this. And again, this will be a shorter video, more of a celebratory one. But um, yeah, so let's get straight into the content. It comes from TechCrunch. But before we do, make sure to go ahead, like, subscribe. If you find this, this uh, information useful, uh, all your breaking news, 10 a.m., 6 p.m., um, de you know, varying degrees of, uh, of news coverage, depending on what it is, business, marketing, but whatever happening in the news cycle, I'll cover it for you and I'll make sure to give you the objective uh, viewpoint. So let's go straight into it. So TechCrunch reports, YouTube shuts down music companies use of manual copyright claims to steal creator revenue. That's uh, even that right there. The H1 is pretty, um, the rhetoric there to steal creative revenue. So what they're really saying is there is a very specific way to that you can go about uh, a copyright and claim and you could use the claim id system which is how most of the copyrights are uh the copyright infringement or the copyright claiming occurs but there's also this what i think most people would have called a little bit more the insidious side insidious side where you could have more of the like the copyright trolls and, and the copyright click farms which are going to be looking for if you have like five seconds of video music in the background of like a vlog or like say let's Let's say like uh, someone, a, a giant, like PewDiePie has is you know hears some music playing in, in some in the background of wherever he is. Like that's probably gonna get copyright claimed because of people who want to demonetize. So they'll let the video run, but they'll take the revenue from it and and track the details of the actual video. So that's that's kind of like the gist of what's happening. So they're basically doing away with a with someone's ability to say no you like you you actually can't take this money anymore so before they would take the video they'd claim it and they'd say keep it up but we're taking the revenue now they're saying you can't take the revenue you can block it you can claim it and block it or you can let it run so it's it's there's no longer an incentive to be going out of your way to to be targeting ob honestly for some pretty egregious use of of copyright claims and some some you know, turning the turning the cheek to what I would consider definitely fair use. So uh, this is a huge, huge deal. And I think, uh, you know, again, this isn't some this isn't going to affect everyone. This, this is really going to be for the more of like the music side, more of if you hear something in the background. So I'll read off uh, one of the one of the um, one of the comments from YouTube's actual blog post. One concerning trend you've seen uh, we've seen is aggressive manual claiming of short music uh, uh, very short music clips used in monetized videos. These claims can feel particularly unfair as they transfer all revenue from the creator to the claimant, regardless of the amount of music claimed. So you could have five seconds in an hour long like documentary you worked three months on and they're going to claim the entire revenue, not a percent, not a share, all of it. And uh, it, it was ridiculous. Even as I explain it, it probably sounds ridiculous, but um, it doesn't actually touch the content ID match system, which I have a massive problem with still to this day. Uh, and I honestly, I can show you I, just because I think this is <laughs> for the for the genuineness uh, and the candor that I like to provide you guys. I think this is worth showing you. So um, I wonder, hopefully I don't look like an idiot right now. So let's try it. Um, there is a, a tiny bit of backstory. So I have uh, and I push everyone to do this, but I have a personal channel as well. And I'm a victim of this. And in my opinion, I'm going to I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to fight it as much as I possibly can, because I think it's ridiculous. But I think YouTube's move today actually does make me smile and happy because I think it's a move in the right direction. So I have a personal channel that makes Formula One content. So I sometimes talk about Formula One. I'm a big, big fan of Formula One. I try to keep it out of the deep ridge stuff for, for my company's sake, but uh, it still trickles in. And I, what I've noticed is they, and depending on the types of content, so the Formula One content's different, be, it's unique because if it, this is a license that they hold, it's proprietary to them. But you got to remember the, the fair use claim 
uh, and it's, it's a legal claim is if you are making some sort of, if it's a comedic uh, commentary or if it's for the use of education and it's not the sole purpose, if, if it doesn't replace the content you are covering, like if I make Formula One content and it's not replacing the Formula One content that the license holder owns, technically it's considered, it should be considered fair use. But as an example, I'll show you how ridiculous this is. And I can't do anything about it because the content ID system is, is archaic. If, if I make a, if I make a challenge that someone, you know, they, they will basically, if I upload something, they will basically say, no, you can't do that. And uh, we're, we're going to block this video. They don't even let me, they don't even demonetize and let me run. They, they say no. And if I try to say I dispute, it's going right back to them. It doesn't go to anyone else. Why? So why on earth would they all of a sudden change their mind? And I'll prove it to you. Okay, so I've got the logged into the back end of, uh, of my personal page. And so I actually recorded it because what I was noticing was when I was uploading content, they were actually um, depending and they were doing things for all the videos. And then after the weekend was over, because usually F1 races, they go from a, a Friday to a Sunday, they would actually remove my name. And I started to notice that and I thought that was weird as to why they were only putting my name in the back end parts of their channel and, and their data and then removing it. And then I started to realize, well, maybe it's because they think if I were to, if I, I could basically screenshot that or something, but um, I actually went ahead and made a video kind of going through it, um, just the full video so you couldn't think I was making it up. And uh, what I could do is just look at view page source, right click and type in, you know, Nick Williams. And that's, that's the name of the channel uh, of my F1 channel. And I made it private. So you can clearly see uh, user display name, Nick Williams, FMT list. And what they were doing was anytime I was uploading anything, uh, it was getting blocked. It, it was getting blocked. And what I, what I think, and I've talked to a lot of people and I can't get YouTube to do anything about it was, it looks like they're just, they've tagged with watermark. And then if you even do anything with the watermark. So what I've done is I've tested it and I've just put like a still 30 second image of a watermark. And it's like, how could that be a copyright? How could it be a copyright? You have to, number one, you have to consider for it to be fair use. You have to consider the, the context of what's being said to make a call on fair use. And so the point is, this is uh, very near and dear to my heart. And I know a lot of people with a similar story. And this is a, you know, I'm going up against the channel with millions of, of, of subs. So, of course, I can understand why YouTube wouldn't do anything about it. It's just not great. But, uh, you know, I kind of keep this video, you know, private and locked. So that way I always have proof and, you know, it's just something that uh, if you're a content creator, I, I can especially feel for you. But also, you know, at the same time, when I look at what where YouTube's going, when I see stuff like this, this, this new story, it's a really good move in the right direction, in my opinion. And as someone who has a, a very vested interest in seeing like these things like this progress, uh, I'm really happy to see this. I can say that. Although all the things that, you know, I, I can be upset about with no matter how many emails and people I try to reach out to, it looks like they're doing the right thing. And again, I don't think this is a massive, massive move, but I think it's one in the right direction and I think it sets some precedent and I think they, they've laid out some runway to make even better strides to protect genuine content creators who aren't trying to steal copy they're literally just trying to provide value to an audience where there's a gap and that's exactly what people like me and everyone else on YouTube are really for the most part trying to do and there's some people out there that's not true for but for the most part that is true and uh, I, I can just I, I think I just sincerely appreciate the move they're making it's a big company it's well overdue but it's the right move and it's not easy and they're going to come up against things from the other side so a lot of people were complaining saying it's well, well overdue well you're not considering the things that they're going to have to deal with now so uh, I can totally get it. I can understand why it took so long. And as someone who's been, in my opinion, egregiously, you know, having to deal with this and, and egregiously been offended in terms of the use, the fair use clauses, uh, this is something I just like to see. So big shout out to, to YouTube for this sort of move. This is a great call and uh, it, it's a great move in the right direction for any content creator. So if you missed the story, happy to bring it to you. Congratulatory one and, and you know, more of a positive story for breaking news for once. So thanks for checking this out, guys. We'll be creating some more content tomorrow, but uh, yeah, make sure to like, subscribe and share if you know any other content creators that would like to see it. Thanks a lot.